Hi everyone, it's Tanya and welcome to today's video. In today's video I'm going to share with you all the books that I want to read for the Japanese Literature Challenge 2021. I came across this challenge completely by accident. I was just searching for Japanese books being published in 2021 and so then I came across this challenge which is run by a bookish blog dolcebeleza.net. I will link the announcement and the blog down below in the description box so if you're interested you can also read the announcement yourself and maybe you will be interested in participating in this challenge but apparently it's already the 14th year that this challenge is running so yeah i'm very excited to participate i have never heard about this challenge before and I, like i said i just came across it completely by accident and i was so glad that i found it because it gives me an opportunity to read all the like not all but at least some of the japanese books that have been on my shelf for a very long time. So in this video I will just introduce you the books that I'm going to read. The challenge runs from January, so it's already running, so from January till March. So I still have two months and I have ten books here, so it's like five books for each month. So I think it's doable. <laughs> I think it's doable. Five books for February, five books for March. And I think I can, I can uh, combine them with my February and March TBRs. The first book has been on my TBR for a very long time. I got it quite I got it a long time ago. The Waiting Years by Fumiko Enchi. It is set in the late 19th century. We will be following a wife of a high Japanese official. She is a faithful wife and she loves her husband. However, he ha she has a very interesting task to perform in this book. She is sent to Tokyo where among hundreds of geishas she is supposed to choose a lover for her husband. Externally calm but torn apart on the inside, Tomo, the main protagonist, starts searching for an official mistress. What a situation! What a situation! <laughs> I feel, I think I will start with it. I will start with it. <laughs> I will start my February with this book. Then I have a collection of short stories. I actually found this very interesting series. So this is the book of Tokyo, but it has a lot of books about different cities. Like there is the book of Dubai, the book of Paris, the book of something else. And these are like collections of short stories by authors coming from these towns, from these cities and writing about these cities. So I have a book of Tokyo. And yeah, it's a short story collection. Stories must be something strange and weird, but I'm very excited to explore. And then I have, uh, actually these two covers are very similar. I, I Before, when I was kind of looking at these books, I mixed this book to, these two books together. Covers are very similar, I feel like, just like the landscape of Tokyo. So the, sec the third book that I have is The Last Children of Tokyo by Yoko Tawada. Yoko Tawada, from what I know, she is a Japanese German writer. We follow main protagonist Yoshiro. Yoshiro, he is a very old man. He is in, he's like 100 years old, so he is probably one of the oldest citizens of Tokyo. And he remembers the town before it was poisoned, before the air was poisoned and water was poisoned. So he remembers those days. However, he also has a grandson who is very sickly. And the old man understands that his grandson probably will not be able to survive even his adulthood in this poisoned city and he tries to find different ways to keep his grandson alive so it's going to be something like a family story i guess and the commentaries on the back sound very interesting the last children of tokyo is both unsettling and enchanting gentle and sharp edged tawada writes beautifully about unbearable things then another one Yoko Tawada's The Last Children of Tokyo carries us beyond the limits of what it is to be human in order to remind us of what we must hold dearest to our conflicted in our conflicted world, our humanity. I haven't read anything by her. I have one more book by Yoko Tawada actually, like Memories of Polar Bear, something like that, or Memoirs of Polar Bear, something like that. But I decided to start with uh, Last Children of Tokyo because it just sounds so, so, so good. And then I have two books by Yasunari Kawabata, which I'm very excited about, like both of them. Last year I read his Snow Country, enjoyed it a lot. I cannot say that like I understood it completely, the re relationship 
between people were a little bit like over my head I didn't understand the relationship there but the writing and just how he writes about the town and traditions of the place are very interesting and his writing is like poetry so I'm very excited to continue with these two books by him I have beauty and sadness and then I have the sound of the mountain so we will start with the sound of the mountain so what the blurb says Agata Shingo is growing old and his memory is failing him. And night, at night he hears only the sound of death in the distance rumble from the mountain. The relationships which have previously defined his life with his son, his wife and his attractive daughter-in-law are dissolving and Shingo is caught between love and destruction. Lyrical and precise, the sound of the mountain explores, explores in immaculate I cannot pronounce this word immaculately in immaculately crafted prose the changing roles of love and the truth we fa face in aging and yeah Yosunari Kawabata won the Nobel Prize in Literature uh, so yeah. this is the first book that I want to read by him and then another one Beauty and Sadness the successful writer Oki has reached middle age and is filled with regrets he returns to Kyoto to find Otoka, a young woman with whom he had a terrible love affair many years before, and uh, discovers that she is now a painter living with a younger woman as her lover. Akoto has continued to love Oki and has never forgotten him, but his return unsettles not only her, but also her young lover. This is a work of strange beauty, with a tender touch of nostalgia and a heartbreaking sensitivity to those things lost forever. So it's going to be a novel about relationships. And I, lo and I love such things, like relationship people, their inner worlds are always very interesting. And yeah, uh, his prose, like his writing is very beautiful. So I'm super, super excited to read. Um, and then I have two books by Natsume Sosuke <laughs> because Natsume, I feel like Natsume Sosuke is one of Japan's beloved authors because I've heard from quite a few people, Japanese people, saying that like Natsume Sosuke is their favorite writer so yeah, I have two books by him to try this book has been on my Twitter for a very very long time this is like a more new addition to my collection but still quite a long time so first I will, st I think I will start probably with Kokoro I will start with Kokoro by Natsume Sosuke. This is something about a uh, relationship between a professor, a sensei, and his student. And sensei recounts his life to his students and shares his experiences with the young man. Mm. And yeah, and even this on the back, Haruki Murakami writes that Sosuke is the representative modern Japanese novelist, a figure of truly national stature. So yeah, even Haruki Murakami highly praises Natsume Sosuke. And then the next book that I have is And Then by Natsume Sosuke. And this is something about a man trying to find his place in the new kind of changing culture of his country when the country is accepting new traditions from the West and the man trying to find his place in this situation. A man in his 20s who is struggling with his personal purpose and identity as well as, ch as the changing social landscape of Meiji era Japan. And then I have um, I feel like it's going to be just a quick, easy, enjoyable read just kind of to make me feel good and, you know, to love the life and love the people. So I'm going to try Sweet Bean Paste. I don't expect it to be like a very deep emotion or anything like that. I expect it to be just something kind, you know, something warm, something lovely. That's what, I'm ex that's what I expect from the book. And that's kind of the feel that the cover gives you. But also the cover is very beautiful. So the Sweet Bean Paste. But actually it won some prize, a poignant poetic fable on the power of friendship infused with the genius of simplicity. It will warm even the melancholiest of hearts. Yes, we need our hearts being warmed, we need that. <laughs> And through his beautiful prose, Durian Sukigawa teaches us that no existence is devoid of meaning and that even the humblest of beings has a valuable contribution to make to the world in which we live. Like, if this description doesn't tell you that this book is going to be just everything, <laughs> I don't know what will. Because it sounds like 
don't know, it sounds so good. It sounds like completely my cup of tea, you know? Everybody is important. Friendship, love, culinary magic. Yes, yes, we need our hearts being warmed. That's what we're gonna do. That's how we are going to warm them. <laughs> And then I have a second book by Yuko Tsushima. I read her uh, The Territory of Light and now I have a Child of Fortune. She writes uh, both of these books are about single mothers and single mothers experiences in Japan. The first book she was she has just um, separated from her husband and she has just started living alone with her three-year-old daughter and like all the guilt that she is experiencing all the pressure from the society that she is experiencing and how she's dealing with it which is like not very healthy and like in not very good way but she doesn't really have any like any option and now this is going to be i expect it to be something similar it's also about a single mother who is um raising her child 11 year old daughter alone in her apartment and now after a casual affair she is unexpectedly pregnant again and also her relationship with her daughter is kind of tense so how this pregnancy is going to affect her relationship with her 11 year old daughter which i actually i, I enjoyed the first book so i want to try this as well and the interesting thing is that the daughter herself was a single mother and she is a daughter of a single mother she is actually a daughter of uh, another japanese writer she was a daughter of osamu dazai her mom and her dad separated he was i think he was famous with like having multiple affairs but also he has like a difficult life he committed a suicide so he was a difficult person and yeah so this yukio tsushima is his daughter and then the last book that i have which is going to be kind of experiment because it's kind of an existential novel and i don't i haven't read existential novels like i don't I don't think I have. So it's going to be a, a try. I don't know how I'm going to like it or maybe not. I don't know. If you have read this book, please let me know. So this is The Woman in the Dunes by Kobo Abe. We follow this Nikki Junpei who is an insect enthusiast and he searches the scorching desert for beetles. As night falls, he is forced to seek shelter in an eerie village, half buried by huge sand dunes. He awakens to the terrifying realization that the villagers have imprisoned him in a steep-sided sand pit with no means of escape. Tricked into slavery and threatened with starvation if he doesn't work, Jumpy's only choice is to shovel the ever-encroaching sand or face an agonizing death. Among the greatest Japanese novels of the 20th century, The Woman in the Dunes combines the essence of myth, suspense, and the existential novel. So, yeah, it's going to be an experiment. I, I, I don't think I have read such books before, but actually, look at it. It has a very big font, so it's going to be very comfortable to read. And it also has some very strange, like, these illustrations. Like, very weird illustrations I found. You see the whole page of Beatles. So it's going to be an experiment and it's going to be an interesting one so hopefully i will enjoy it if you have read it please let me know what you thought about it and what i should prepare myself to <laughs> so these are okay asamu dazai i will not be reading asamu dazai yet but somewhere in the future i will because i already own his book so yeah these are the 10 books 10 Japanese novels that I hope to get to during February and March and all of them I'm super excited for I'm like all of them I'm super excited for I decided to start reading multiple books because like I have so many exciting books on my shelves and all the books from my February TBR are also super exciting and I want to start my February also with um, Narcissus and Goldbond and then I have also Bajiri. I think this is the book I'm the most excited about. So I will start it maybe along with uh, Narcissus and Goldmoon, or maybe after, if, maybe before Narcissus and Goldmoon. We will see. <laughs> we will see what I will be in the mood. But I feel like I will start with it. So yeah, this for the my Japanese literature challenge TBR. Let me know in the comments if you will be participating. If you want to extend your horizons and read Japanese literature. I'm super excited. I'm so excited. I was so happy when I found this uh, challenge. I was like, oh, oh, yes, that's what we need. <laughs> so yeah, 
that was the TBR. Hopefully you will participate too. If you will, please let me know what books you are going to read. And also please let me know your favorite books by Japanese authors that you have already read. Please share it with me because I'm always on the lookout for like Japanese literature. I, I really enjoy uh, what I have read of it so far, which is not a lot, but something and I, it was really good. Please share it with me. Japanese literature recommendations that you have. Share with me books that you, Japanese books that you want to read. And for now, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're having a very good day. I hope you're staying safe and I will see you soon in my next videos. Thank you very much. Bye.